Hi, uh, good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight for this edition of Conversations with Camden. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about campus life here at CMA, and uh, we'll talk about all aspects of Camden, from academics to what's a typical day like, to sports, um, to what's fun and to what's not so fun here at CMA. So, um, and to, to help us with that conversation tonight, I've got three cadets um, that are going to be helping us. Uh, we are on summer break. We were able to graduate May 9th this year. So these guys have been at home for a little bit. Um, so we're all dressed a little bit more casually um, than we typically would be tonight. But uh, we'll start out with some introductions for these guys. And uh, Cole, we'll start with you. Just tell them your name, your grade, and where you're from. Uh, I'm in Cole. I'm Cole. Uh, I'm from Lewis, Delaware, and I'm going into 11th grade. And Cole has the wrong shirt on. So that's the wrong Carolina blue. Um, we got to get him a Garnet Carolina shirt. And then we'll move on to Whitaker next. Uh, my name is Lucas Whitaker. I'm going into senior year and I live in Columbia. Yeah, so Whitaker's our really local boy. And um, okay, McGregor, you do the same. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mark McGregor. I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. I'm going into my 12th grade year. All right. So a little bit more about CMA. Um, you know, we are a boarding school. We're grade seven through 12. Um, we do have one year of post-grad work as well. Um, these guys tonight are, you know, upper school or students and cadets, but we have middle school, seventh and eighth grade. Um, so the younger guys are here. Um, they're just not included on the broadcast tonight, but they have been on previous broadcasts that you can find and watch on our YouTube channel or our website, CanadianMilitary.com. Also, we have opened the campus back up to visits um, and also to open houses. So we'll be having opening houses here on campus. The next one is actually June 12th, which is a Saturday morning, starting at 9 o'clock in the morning, so 9 a.m. Um, be on time because we do have a presentation followed by a campus tour, and then we have an opportunity for interviews and for you to talk with admissions representatives following the tour. Uh, we'll also be back out on the road. So check our website, camdenmilitary.com, under admissions, and then open house. Um, we will be in several cities coming up soon charlotte miami um, palm beach las vegas um, i think myrtle beach is on thursday night so anyway check that schedule we may be coming to a city near you so that you can meet us um, in person but again thank you for joining us tonight virtually and we want you to, to be particip to participate i can't talk to participate in the uh, discussion tonight so we want you to ask questions use the hashtag camden military um, post your question on any social media and then that hashtag right there on the screen, hashtag Camden Military. And we will get to as many of those questions as we can tonight. But we're going to start talking to these guys. And uh, guys, let's start with an easy one. What have you been doing? What's been going on since you left us? You've been home, what, two, three weeks? So, um, Cole, what you been up to? I've been hanging out with my family and my friends, just enjoying my time at home. Um, I haven't seen them in a couple of months so I mean it was great seeing them at first so just been sitting at home haven't really been doing anything but went shopping got to go to a movie with my parents just spending quality time with my family all right good and McGregor what about you what you been doing in the holy city down there uh, my family recently adopted a uh, kitten we named her Sabrina um, she's probably downstairs right now um, been spending lots of time with my family uh, got to see my brother, my mom, my grandparents, which is really great. Whitaker, a little different question. What's the one thing that you enjoy the most about being at home that maybe you get to have that you don't get to have at Camden? Uh, probably my own bed. It's great. <laughs> uh, I love to see my dog too. I miss him. Yeah, yeah I'm probably, sure the mattress at home is a little more comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about the life at Camden. So I want to talk a little bit about you guys before you got to Camden. Um, Mark, we'll start with you kind of whose idea was it to start looking for military schools and whose idea was it? Um, it was definitely my mother's idea. Um, I was not performing as well as I definitely could be at public school. I slacked off, didn't do homework, slept in class, um, skipped class a lot. Yeah. And how about you, Cole? Whose idea? Um, well, at first it was my grandfather's idea, and then he told um, it to my mom because he went to Carlisle. So they kind of connected to get to, to get my parents were like, oh, this is such a great idea because I was slacking off, not doing my work. 
um, I didn't really care what the teacher was saying, and I would be more socializing in the classroom than doing my homework and actually listening to the lesson. Gotcha. And Lucas, same with you. Why Camden for you? I mean, I'm kind of the same as Cole, my grades, but as my mom's choice, uh, she really helped me through it. So uh, I'm happy to have her to help me through that. Yeah. You know, we, we have a question coming in. It says, how do you handle students who are enrolled um, by their parents and are, arrive as unwilling cadets? Um, the question, you know, th these guys, you know, I think all three of them, none of them said it was their idea. So, um, you know, I don't speak with very many young men who say, oh, yes, I'm excited. I want to go to military school. You know, for the majority of the guys, it is another family member that thought of the thought of the idea and, and you know, kind of pushed the pushed it into to reality. But um, having said that, we do want our cadets to be willing to attend, which is much different than wanting to attend. Um, you know, I, I always use the example, I don't want to go to the dentist, but I'm willing to go to the dentist because I want to keep my teeth. And, you know, that's kind of how it is with these guys. You know, we want these guys to to have a, a, a positive goal to shoot for. And so to do, in order to do that, they need to realize that something's not going well at home, whether it's academics, behavior around the house, talking back, attitude, whatever. And, um, you know, know that a change needs to be made. So anyway, that's I hope that helps. Um, for cadets, though, I think that are um, reluctant to the idea, the best way to get them to kind of warm up to it is by talking to cadets, um, whether it's virtually um, in a situation like this or when you get on campus and meet a cadet. And that's one advantage to an open house. We have open houses going on this summer, but we also have individual visits going on. At an open house, we will have cadets back here on campus to talk to students. So they'll be able to kind of tell them really what it's like and relate to them in different ways. And they'll probably, you know, exchange Snapchats and all that so they can continue the conversation once they leave. But uh, but to me, that's the best way is to really see it um, and see and talk to someone who's lived it. Um, so that's my piece of advice for you. Wow, we already got another question. This is great. Um, is the two hour study hole mandatory or if you get good grades, is it optional? So it is mandatory. So Mark, why don't you kind of tell them what happens during uh, the study hall? So during study hall, you'll have uh, a period of about uh, an hour and a half in which to do your homework. Um, this is to help prevent, you know, the classic excuse, oh, I didn't have any homework last night because you're going to have homework assigned to you and you're gonna, going to have the time to do it. So during study hall, um, you and your roommate will be in your room doing your homework with your door open. The uh, AOC, who's a teacher, will be in the barracks um, going up and down the hallway, making sure everyone's doing their work. Yeah, so that is a mandatory study hall every night. And um, it's, it's really an hour and a half to two hours, depending on how much homework students have that particular night and also how the behavior is going on um, within the barracks. Um, guys, I want to kind of backtrack just a bit to that, that question we had just come in a minute ago. Um, were you guys, any of you concerned about anything at Camden? And then, you know, maybe once you got here, you realized, oh, it's not really like that. You know, what was something you were kind of worried about and then realized, oh, it's not so bad? Um, Cole? So I remember like watching movies of people going to military school and there were all this yelling, screaming and people fighting all the time. But when I got to Camden, there wasn't a lot of that. Um, the people were very, very willing. And you're kind of all in the same, same boat. So you kind of understand what each and every person is going through. So they're kind of building you up. So no, it was nothing like that. I thought. Yeah. Mark, did you have any kind of preconceived notions that turned out to be not true? Um, I was I was personally worried about bullying and hazing. You know, that's the stereotypical view of a military school. I came to Camden, come to find out it's absolutely nothing like that. There's no no activity like that at all in the barracks. If there's any, you know, your um, cadet chain of command or TAC officer will shut it down immediately. Right. And that's what I tell guys, you know, don't watch movies before you come because it will kind of freak you out. Um, I don't know if you guys are probably a little young, but Major Pain um, was a movie back in the day um, that probably most parents are familiar with out there. And, uh, you know, it kind of 
it's a military school and believe it or not they actually looked at cma to film that and i'm kind of glad they didn't because that would really scare <laughs> probably scare off some people saying oh yeah it was filmed here but um but yes yeah, so, so don't watch too many movies and you know get the real story from these guys um versus you know what's portrayed out there in in media um, another question, this guy's been in the ROTC for four and a half years and would my rank transfer over to your school? Unfortunately, no. Um, some of your ribbons may be able to be worn, um, but what we do is someone who's got prior ROTC experience, we try to get you back to your previous rank as soon as possible. So it just depends on what your rank is. We also have limits for rank as to how, how much and how high a student can go per grade level. So um, a lot, lot of factors in there. But if you want to email me your specific details, um, you can do that and I'll get back to you with, with the correct answer there. Um, we have a question about cell phones and electronics. So what's our cell phone and electronics rule, Whitaker? Why don't you take that one? Um, well, you're not allowed to have it after curfew. You can't take it to class. Uh, you can use it during free time, which is after class and before study hall. Uh, if you're caught with it after lights out, when you're supposed to be asleep, uh, the night guard will usually take it or tell you to get off of it and go to sleep. Uh, if you're caught with it in class, they take it for a week, two weeks. Um, I think that's really it, but um, yeah, it. just don't get caught with it. Don't get, yeah, <laughs> don't have it to get caught with it. Um, you know, I always joke and say, I think our commandant's favorite pastime is coming around to classes to, uh, see if he can catch anyone with their phone or you're not even supposed to have it in your book bag. So, um, you know, he, he, he's got a drawer full of phones in his office usually throughout the year. Um, so what I tell students with the, the electronic policy, you know, it's a big responsibility. So you got to maintain and, and follow the rules and, and do what's right with it because it is a privilege and you can lose it. Um, another question coming in, have you decided on a vaccination policy for the upcoming school year? Yes, we have. Uh, we are not requiring the vaccine, um, COVID vaccine. Um, we encourage you to get it, but we're, we are not requiring it of anyone. Um, luckily, this past year, uh, we were able to keep COVID off of our campus. We kind of insulated ourselves inside of a bubble. Um, so we didn't have any instances of COVID. We want to keep the campus open next year. The plan is to have normal school schedule with all the breaks and furloughs and trips and sports and all that. So, um, you know, in order to maintain that, we're going to have to control COVID. Everyone coming in will have a COVID test in the school year, both summer school and school year. Um, and we will have a quarantine space here if anyone tests positive. But of course, if we start having positive cases on campus, we'll probably have to come become a little more restrictive with our leaves and things like that. So encouraging the vaccine, but not, not requiring it. All right. Another question coming in. Do seniors get extra privileges? Um, well, none of you guys have been a senior yet. Um, McGregor, you lived with some seniors last year though, um, over in Bannon staff with the, uh, were you in Bannon staff? No, sir. Charlie company. Oh, Charlie, do I have any Bannon staff guys? Okay. never mind. All right. Whitaker, I mean, uh, McGregor, the guys that you live with in Charlie company, um, the seniors, did they get any extra privileges that you're aware of? Um, so, uh, not necessarily seniors, but chain of command members, uh, typically, um, uh, you use their cell phones to be able to contact tech officers, not during class, obviously, but, um, on periods that you normally wouldn't be allowed to have your phone. Uh, it would be like in the morning when we we're cleaning the barracks, uh, for example, they would have their phones on them so they could, you know, contact the TAC officer. Um, that's, that's only the really, the only, um, major privilege I'm aware of. Yeah. I mean, pretty much. And like you said, the chain of command, um, which are the leaders in the school, they have a little more, privileges a little more privileged than the typical cadet but they also have more responsibilities so at the same time they're kind of earning those extra privileges um you know but yeah so they may get more um you know trips to chick-fil-a or something like that than the typical student but all that typical student has to do is become a leader make himself stand out and then he can you know earn those privileges as well all right another question coming in um how old do you have to be um, we don't have an age requirement to come to cma you just have a grade requirement so you have to be a rising seventh grader at least. Um, you cannot be older than 19 um, of July 1st of the year you want to come in. 
All right, and then what's the personal computer and laptop policies? Um, pretty much what these guys talked about a few minutes ago. Um, you know, the electronics policy, pretty much the first time you, you get caught using it the in inappropriate way, you lose it for a month, the second, I mean, I'm sorry, a week or two weeks, the second time you lose it for a month, third time you lose it for good. So you wanna make sure, again, if you bring any electronics, including, you know, game stations, Xboxes, whatever, that you use them appropriately and at the right time. All right, guys, I wanna go back to, uh, to grades before Camden. So I know, I think all of you kind of said, whoops, you know, my grades were slipping a bit, but you know, why do you think they were slipping at home? And then have they improved here? And if they have improved, why do you think they have? Cole, we'll start with you. I had all Fs, it was, it was bad. Um, um, my grades definitely improved at Camden because it's a small class up to like 12 people and the teacher can like, you can personally get help from the teacher, raise your hand, the teacher can obviously see you. Unlike a public school class up to 30 kids where it's kind of hard for like the teacher to, for like you could ask help for the teacher, but here at Camden you can get a lot of help with the teachers, which made me get better grades than I did at public school. Yeah. Whitaker, how about you? Uh, I'm kind of the same as Cole. Uh, I just needed structure. I needed someone there to slap me on the back of the head when I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. But um, I came to help me with that a lot. Home, out here at home, I uh, I don't have anybody to, to tell me to do this. Sit down and do it. You know, you need to do this. It's it's good for your future, stuff like that. But uh, no, Camden's helped me a lot with my grades. I used to be failing all my classes and now I got better grades than I've ever had. And, you know, and Lucas kind of, he, he pointed out something really good there. He said, no one's at home to do it. Well, actually, I know that his mom's on him about it. However, um, you know, the thing that, and people ask me this question a lot. Hey, Casey, why do we have to pay you to do it? Why can't we do it at home? Well, you have that emotional connection at home. Um, moms and dads, you love your kids. That's your job. You know, these guys, when they come to CMA, we like you a whole lot. We don't love you. And so that makes it a whole lot easier for us. You know, the manip manipulation that sometimes teenage boys have and play um, is gone. And so, you know, what we say goes and there's no getting out of it or, hey, can I have a 400th chance at doing this again or whatever? So, um, so yeah, but anyway. All right, McGregor. This guy here wants to know what times the school days start. So kind of take us through the morning. What happens, say, from wake up through um, first period? So um, in a typical day, a uh, typical weekday at 5.30, uh, Cadet Chain of Command will wake up. Then 6 o'clock, rest of the uh, company will wake up. Then we clean rooms, do personal hygiene. You get time to brush your teeth, clean your room. Um, around 7 o'clock, you have the battalion formation. The whole um, battalion, that's all the companies, forms up in front of the dining hall and then are filed into the dining hall to eat breakfast. Um, after breakfast, you're going to have some kind of activity, whether that's PT or drill or uh, tack time, which is going back to the barracks, um, typically cleaning some more. Um, uh, after that, you'll go to school around 9.30, uh, classes start, and you have uh, first period, second period and third period. And then you'll have a tutorial period on Monday. Tutorial is after first period. Tuesday, it's after second. And Wednesday through Friday, it's after third. Good job. And um, let's see, Juliana, why don't you tell them kind of what happens, say, from the end of school at 315 until it lights out? So at 315, we have free time up until five. We sum up with the companies as McGregor said, and we'll go over to the dining facility and they'll file us into the dining facility until about seven. And then we'll go back to the barracks and we'll have study hall and that will be from seven to nine. And then from there, we'll have personal hygiene, uh, get ready for bed. And at 10 o'clock, it's lights up. All right, good job. All right, another question come in. Um, do you have any students that are international and how diverse are the nationalities? Um, we do have some international students. Um, this past year, due to COVID, the numbers were down. Um, we had maybe four to five, three to five, somewhere like that. Um, but And they were from all over. We had uh, this year, 
we had um, Germany, Ukraine, um, oh, Kuwait. Um, then we've had a Chinese. Um, a few years ago, we had 17 international students. But last year, the numbers were down due to COVID. Um, according to um, immigration and the CVIS organizations, they're saying it's going to be about a three to five year rebound um, before the international population gets back up to where it was once. So we're looking forward to that, though, because we do like the diversity that we have here at CMA. All right, back to the military haircuts and clothes. I know that worries a lot of young men. You know, they don't want to get that buzz cut. And, you know, what are, what are the uniforms like? So, um, Mark, why don't you kind of tell them, do they have to get the buzz and what's the haircut like? So your first cut, at, uh, your first haircut at Camden is always going to be your worst. Um, I had a lot of hair coming into Camden, and I lost uh, just about all of it. But it's not going to be, you know, a zero buzz all around. It's not as as nearly as bad as, you know, the stereotype of a military school make it out to be. Um, typically, your first cut will just be a standard. That's a um, about a three or four all around. Um, they'll normally leave a little bit more on the top. Um, and then after that period, you'll be allowed to choose between a, a high and tight and uh, a standard. A uh, high and tight is the same as a standard, just a little bit more on top. Yeah. So, again, I doubt if any of these guys had, had their haircut since they've left CMA. So, um, you know, take off a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, and that's about, you know, what we allow. Um, it has to be short on the sides, over the ears. Um and Whitaker, what do you think about the uniforms? Are they horrible? And what are the different uniforms? Uh, they're not too bad. After that first two weeks, you get pretty used to the, the different uniforms and how to put them on. Because when I first got there, there were buttons everywhere. And I, I never even seen half this stuff. And so, you know, fellow or my friends would help me you know, put my stuff on. I didn't know how to tie a tie until somebody tied it for me. Uh, but uh, we have parade or, or dress, and that's the, our most formal uh, outfit. Or that's usually for uh, like parades. It's like once a month. And then for church every Sunday. And then we have uh, class. We have to wear that every day to go to class. And then we got uh, ACUs. I'm pretty sure they're ACUs. Your ACUs are AOCs. Uh, but these are like camouflage thing or yeah, camouflage uh, m uh, military suits. I guess uh, I don't know. Um, but you wear them on when it's like rainy or bad weather just so you don't get your other uniforms messed up. And what's your favorite uniform out of all this? Probably PT Summers. Shorts PT and a Summers. t-shirt. Gotcha. All right. Well, we do have a new um, travel windsuit coming out that you guys will like a whole lot better than what we've had in the past. So um, that's a good surprise you'll have when you get back. It's, it's Under Armour, and it's got some cool blue piping on it and stuff. So and underneath is blue. Anyway, I got excited about it when I saw it. <laughs> You'll see it later. Um, all right, we have someone want to know about the food. Is the food higher quality than public school? Um, who went to public school? Raise your hand if you went to public school before Camden. All right, so Mark, is the Camden food better than it was at your public school? Uh, it's about the same. Um, it's There's always gonna be you know something that someone's not gonna like. It really just depends on the day. Um, I personally like probably about 75% of the meals at Camden. Um, it, it's just, it's all depending on taste. Yeah, it is. And, you know, it really depends on what the food is. You know, there was one point uh, we had stir fry and the administration and faculty, we despised it. We didn't like it. So we told the uh, guy over in the kitchen to take it off the menu. Well, we have a dining council made up of cadets and they kind of, formed a coup because they wanted that meal. And so um, we brought it back and that's the days that we go out to eat. Um, you know, unfortunately they don't have the opportunity to go out to eat, but there are other options um, available. There's a salad bar this year. We didn't have this because of COVID, but going back to normal, we'll have a salad bar. We'll have dessert bar. We'll have um, sandwiches, things like that. So there are 
other things to eat. Um, plus, during the free time, you have the Carlisle House, and you can get some junk food, you can get some pizza delivered, and, and things like that. So, uh, yeah, I don't believe they'll go hungry. They're teenage boys. All right, someone also wants to know, how many people are in the barrack? And can someone kind of describe the barrack and what it's like? Um, so, Cole, why don't we start with you on this one? How many people, well, I'll, I'll tell them that. There's about 50 to 60 guys in each barrack, um, range in all grades, 7th through 12th grade in there. The roommate's someone no more than one year difference in age. But, um, Nicole, I'll leave it up to you to kind of describe the barracks to them and, you know, what's in there and what can you bring. So, um, normally in a typical room, that'll be uh, two bunk beds, um, one, bunk, one bunk, and then you'll have two desks. And what I brought was my TV and my Xbox, and then the desk will be for study hall. You'll have your books up there. There'll be two chairs. Then you'll have your, there'll be two presses to hang your uniforms in and put all your white webbing in there and all that. Um, the barracks outside are, it's a brick building and um, it's on the inside. It's like wood, wooden, the floors are wooden. It's very long, like a hotel lobby, like very, very long strip. Just, just, just rooms side by side to each other. Um, the doors have uh, passcodes on them, so no one can get into your room. Only you will know the code. So that's what I like about the room. So secure. Yeah. So, you, and it's really important, like you said, don't give out that passcode. And then if you have any small belongings, you have a safe in there too, to, um, you know, keep your phones locked up, your wallets and things like that. Um, there is a virtual tour on our website, 360. So you can go into the barracks and spin around and see what they look like. Um, you know, tour the whole campus. We did that when, when COVID struck. So you know, if you want to do that, please go to our website and uh, check it out. Um, we have another question coming in. How are the roommates paired together other than my age and grade? And can you request a specific company you want to be in? Yes, you can request a specific company, but it's not guaranteed um, that you'll be in there. So what we do is we take those requests and try to make sure that we have someone else your own age that can be a suitable roommate for you, somebody you have something in common with. Um, but if you don't like your roommate, um, you can change, request a change after the first two to three weeks. So it's only that initial period that we put you with someone who we think would be a good fit. Um, but if you guys don't get along or whatever, you certainly can change as the year goes. It just has to be approved by your TAC officer. Um, this is a funny question that I have not received until this year. And so I've been on the headmaster about this. Um, is the television monitor limit of 22 inches strict or can it go over a few if needed? Yeah, you can actually go over a few. I'm not even sure they make 22 inch TVs anymore. Um, but the purpose in putting that in there is keep them small. You know, we don't want you coming in here with a 65 inch to hang on the wall um, because we're not going to allow it. So small flat screen TV is where to go. Um, so, yes, it can be a little bit over, you know, everything that's in our packet, our parent handbook, our packing list, you know, those are suggestions. So if you want to go over a little bit, go under a little bit, that's fine. Um, but, yeah, there we go. So I'm trying to get you a bigger TV in the room, guys. Now, keep in mind, they do not have cable in the room. Um, you'll have digital antennas. You get the digital channels. But usually those TVs are used for video games. Um, and one thing guys like about the smaller TVs is I've seen them actually walking across campus carrying their TV and their Xbox over to the public Wi-Fi so that they can hook them up and play games there. So if you have a, a big TV, it's kind of hard to, to carry it across. Um, oh, good question here. Um, what's in the Carlisle house? What is that? Um, so, Mark, why don't you kind of tell them about the Carlisle House and what's around it? What can you do in it? Uh, the Carlisle House is uh, kind of like our student recreation center. Uh, there's a few different rooms. Uh, you can sit down, watch TV, play the piano, uh, look at old yearbooks, play pool, a bunch of different other, other games. Um, the main thing, main reason people go to the Carlisle House is to get food and snacks. So they sell pizza, uh, chips, cookies, uh, sodas, the really big thing people go there for. Um, just lots of, lots of like junk food and stuff um, that you normally, you know, don't uh, get with the normal meals at school. Um, there's also uh, internet that's obviously it's, it's monitored and restricted but it's, you know, uh, people use it to play video games and stuff. Yeah. 
So we do have Wi-Fi for the guys in the admin building, the library, um, the Carlisle House, and the academic buildings. But yes, as he said, we do have filters there to, to try to keep them as honest as possible um, while they're on the internet. Um, another question coming in, will the boys be assigned a Camden email address? Absolutely. So they, they can continue to use their Gmails or you know whatever they have at home. But yes, they'll have a specific Camden email as well that will um, have Google Classrooms through and some assignments and things like that. So want to make sure they, they are checking that often. Another question, will athletics be back to normal? Yes. So um, we are very excited. Our headmaster is a, uh, he was a former athletic director here at CMA and has taken over as headmaster, gosh, 20 years ago now. And um, he is a very big proponent of sports. So it nearly killed him this past year when football was canceled because he was a football coach. So we are planning to play football. We have talking to the coach today, actually, about some games that we have scheduled and looking forward to an exciting season. All right, but in all of our sports, we're back to normal. All right, and guys, extracurricular activities. Um, what's some things that we do on the weekend? Um, you know, now you guys, well, Cole and Lucas, y'all were here during COVID, so no fun for you, all right? Nothing on the weekends. But Mark, did you really... Your first year here, did you get to experience any of our weekend activities or off-campus trips? Yes, sir, I did. So um, tell us a little bit about what you did. Um, so every year there's um, a few different trips you can take. My personal favorite was the Carowinds trip at the very beginning of the year. I'd never gone, and I had a blast. Um, that was like a really good introduction to the school for me because that's, that's within the first week of school. Um, we go to Washington, D.C., Orlando. Uh, there's two different ski trips. We go up to West Virginia, uh, stay at a ski resort. That's a lot of fun. Uh, what else? Uh, That's we good. occasionally have... Sir? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish oh, up. We occasionally have uh, paintball trips. Um, we go to Medieval Times. Lots of uh, football trips. There's a lot of trips that... Uh, were available to us last year since there was, you know, this is pre coronavirus. So it was um, a lot more free. We're hoping to get back to this uh, this year. Yeah. So, you know, this past year, because of the lockdown um, that we had on campus, it was pretty much, we went to the movies about once a week. Um, the, the local theater here opened up for us midweek for that. And then towards the end of the year, we started having some paintball trips um, off campus. And I think the guys really, really had a good time with that. But, um, but next year, again, we're planning to have all those trips that Mark just talked about. And um, I know the guys are excited, especially maybe these guys that haven't had a chance to experience that yet. Um, can you have food in the barracks? That's always a popular question. So, Cole, can you have food in the barracks? Yes. Yes, you can. Um, you can have food that you bought from the Carlisle house, like I do sometimes, or your parents can send you care packages. That's what my parents used to do all the time since I was my first year here. They used to send me all these care packages with food, candy, junk food, all this junk food. You'd store it. I'd store it in my desk. But yes, you can have food in your, your bags. Yes. You cannot have a refrigerator. You can't have a microwave or coffee makers and, and things like that. But yes, you can have food. Um, guys have drinks, you know, water bottles, Gatorade bottles, things like that. Um, we just want to try to keep the, the pest out of the barracks so we don't want them um, – having too much, but yes, please send them food and kind of something to follow up on what Cole said about the care packages. I've had a lot of students over the years tell me the first year, mom and dad did really good. They sent me a care package once a month or once a week or whatever. Um, second year, I didn't get anything, but so don't do that to them. You know, remember them, even though it's their second or third year here, I'm um, going continue to, you know, send them a little pick me up every once in a while because um, let them know you're still thinking about them. And guys, that kind of leads me into my next question. I want to talk about your relationship with your parents um, prior to Camden. Um, I know this might be a little personal, a little sensitive, but I've talked to guys over the years and an issue has been that, you know, whether it's because of behavior issue or grade issue, there's been some tension in the house. Um, sometimes it's just with mom, sometimes just with dad, sometimes with both mom and dad. Um, did you guys experience any of that before Camden? And has your relationship changed with that person since you've been at Camden? And uh, Mark, we'll start with you. Um, so I have a kind of um, interesting situation since, you know, my father passed away um, in 2017. And I, I struggled with that a lot. 
Um, and my attitude towards my mother changed a lot. I was disrespectful, honestly. And um, since coming to Camden, I've honestly improved a lot for the better. And I know you, you could ask my mom and she would say the same thing. All right. Cole, how about you? Um, I had a rocky road with my family. So I had a hard like situation with my sister and brother where I wasn't really being part of the family. I'd always sit in my room. I'd go out with friends. I wouldn't really eat at the dinner table. I'd take my food upstairs. But ever since I've been at Camden, I've I've been away from my family so much that it that it that it shows that I that they really mean a lot to me and that I don't really get to see them that often. So when I get that little time to see them, it makes me so happy to be with them. So it's really grown my connection more with my parents and my brother and my sister. All right. Last but not least, Lucas. Have you had any relationships that have improved? I just was sort of really disrespectful towards my mom. And she always wanted what was best for me. But uh, I just never, I don't know, I never really cared about my grades before I came to Camden. So, uh, I don't know, to be in Camden and have structure, it's, uh, it's just been really good for me. And my mom, my mom can see that too. Good. All right, guys. Now, viewers, hang tight with us. We're going to play a video for you now. Um, it lasts close to three minutes, but I think you'll really enjoy it. And it's going to echo and, and kind of put an exclamation point on what these young men just talked about. So take a look at this, and we'll see you on the other side. So I'll just open it up and read. Start whenever I'm ready. All right, my name is Marcus Kirshner. I'm Kobe Hale. My name is Bobby Lowe. I'm about to uh, tell you a letter that I'm going to send to my mom and dad for sending me here. Uh, I'm about to read this letter that I've written to thank my parents. I'm about to read this letter that I'm writing to my mom and dad. Oh, wow. Lawrence and I are so proud of you. You've done and accomplished so much in your few years at Camden, and you should be very proud. I seriously have such a hard time with the reality that you are 18 and graduating high school. When we decided to go to Camden Military Academy to visit, I prayed so hard that God would give us signs that this is where he would have you. You left the comfort of a big king-sized bed at the country club around the corner, and home-cooked meals for early morning wake-ups, a more rigorous structure, and a cafeteria-style cafeteria food. They told you to speak up, look, and show respect. For a Southern mom, this was music to my ears. I know you were forced to be reckoned with since the time you stood up in a stroller when you were three months old. That should have been an indication of things to come. You have come a long way and at this point have done way better than me or mom. Mom and I are so pleased as we look back at the journey you have undertaken. As I write this, I can only think of your big, beautiful smile with sparkling eyes and your funniness and wit, and it makes me smile. Camden Military Academy has been the best thing for you in your future. You have grown up so much during this time and have accomplished amazing things. Over these last four years, there have been many school administrators, TAC officers, teachers, coaches, and fellow cadets who have poured into you and encouraged you. No doubt they have helped you become the man that you are today. I want to encourage you to the end, to end your time there by giving what you have received and instilling hope to those guys in your company who are still struggling. Let them know their value. Pass on what you have been given. Anyone will be lucky to call you their friend. I am even luckier to call you, you brother. You have a bright and successful future ahead. We love you. We're so excited to see you graduate. And there's no way we could be more proud of you than we are. Pretty good letter. I'm glad that you all see what I've done over these last four years and like the hard work that I've put in. And also thank you for always being there for me. I'm really proud to have you all as my family. I love you guys so much. I'm going to succeed for you all. All right. That's good stuff. Um, that's one of my favorite projects every year. Um, we've done it, I think, three or four years now. And so I try to change it up a little bit. So at the beginning, it mentioned a letter that they had 
to write. And so they did, they, they composed a letter to their parents because I told them we're flipping the script this year and we're going to do it in reverse. Um, so we took them in there, they read the letter to their parents, but then we gave them the letters from home and, uh, it was awesome. So the parents actually got to see the letter. We sent them, you know, the full footage and, um, it was very appreciative. But anyway, that's always a fun moment that we always do right around graduation time. Um, when these guys are getting ready to leave us guys, we got more questions coming. So I'm going to jump right in. Um, how long is the Christmas break? All right. So brace yourself here. Um, the Christmas break will start Thanksgiving. All right. So when we go home, we get out the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. We don't see you again until January 2nd. That is one of our breaks. It's mandatory for everyone to go home. Um, we did that last year and we had a lot of positive feedback from our parents um, about that break so that you're not going back and forth so often over the holidays. Cause in previous years, we'd gone home for Thanksgiving and come back to school for two weeks and you go home for Christmas. But we like the idea of giving you guys a long break. Um, and so you're at home for that. Um, a lot of questions about the calendar being posted. Um, I will promise right now, because I've said before that I was going to post it. I, I got it approved about maybe two, three weeks ago, but um, I've been hesitant to post it because sometimes we have to change things, but I'm going to post it as soon as this, um, this YouTube live is over. So be on the lookout for that later tonight. Um, important question, because this is pretty important to, to a lot of cadets. How do you gain rank here at CMA? Um, you know, what do you have to do to become, move from private to private first class to corporal? Um, McGregor, how did you get to be a first lieutenant? So um, my, my first year at Camden, uh, I worked, I mean, incredibly hard. Um, I saw the difference that I wanted to see in myself and I worked towards it. Um, my TAC, so my TAC officers saw that I was putting the work in. I went from private to private first class. And then at the end of the year, uh, this is uh, two years ago now. So this is um, at the start of coronavirus. I, um, I got the rank of corporal, which is a squad leader rank. Um, so you're in charge of people. So you are responsible for people under you. And that's the TAC officer kind of um, trying you out to see how you fit into leadership roles. Um, this year, I was promoted uh, from corporal to sergeant, then staff sergeant. Um, and then at the end of this year, uh, I was promoted to first lieutenant. I'm going to be the battalion public relations and media officer next year on um, battalion staff. Uh, I'm going to be working with uh, Colonel Robinson on um, the uh, Instagram profile and um, producing different media for our website. Yeah, I look forward to working with you this year. So um, we'll see how you do this time next year. I'll have some stories probably. All right. Um, another question coming out. Are there workouts? Um, we have PT, which is physical training. And uh, Whitaker, why don't you kind of tell them what's the physical training like? What do we do out there? Um, well, we have basically just exercises, kind of like how you would have it during PE in public school. Um, there's also intramurals. That's, I think, once or twice a week after school, beginning of free time. Um, you can also do workouts in the mornings for sports. I did football workouts this year. Those were fun. Uh, you know, I got early start on my day, got to work out right after breakfast. So yeah, it felt good to get my morning started like that. Yeah. So yeah, like you mentioned, we have the, the morning PT two or three times a week. The other days you'll have drill. Then you have um, the sports you participate in. In addition to that, you have intramurals. So lots of time spent outside and, and keeping you busy. Um, someone wants to know, is there a driver's ed course um, here? Yes, there is. We have partnered with the local driving school, Championship Driving. And um, have any of you guys taken driver's ed with us? Yeah, Cole? All right, kind of tell them what, how's Championship? Give me a review because I really have never heard. So give me a review. Are they good? I mean, it, it's pretty good. I, I like, I, I never drove before until, until I came to Camden. And my instructor told me everything I needed to know. Uh, they have their own little brake for their own car so they can break the car if they wanted to. I actually got my permit while I was at Camden, which was another great, huge accomplishment for me because I, I bet if I wasn't going to go to Camden, I wouldn't be able to do that. But yes, they, it's a great program and it's very easy stuff and they teach you all you have to do to drive. 
Yeah. I mean, they're, they're good people and they actually, you know, work it around our schedule here at school. So these guys have the ample driving time that they need to, to be prepared as, as well as the classes. We, we offer our buildings for them and they usually have it on Saturdays. Um, cause I believe it's a seven or eight hour course they have to sit through. Um, it's pretty intense. So, uh, yeah, but they take the test immediately following their course. Someone also wanted to know if we had any computer programming or coding courses. We do not. Um, this year, we're going to have a computer class. Um, I don't know what the curriculum is going to look like, um, but in the past, we have not had progr programming or coding, um, but that could be changing because we are hiring a new teacher, and, and I'm not sure of all the capabilities and, and offerings for that yet. Um, and then someone asked what time does school day start. It starts at, what time, guys? Six, anywhere between 6 to 6.30, kind of depending on your barrack and your rank and all that. So um, if we, on a Saturday, you might get a sleep in, and a sleep in does not mean sleep to noon, um, maybe like you like to do at home, but what? You say 9 a.m. or so, guys? Uh, 10 a.m. for sure. 10? Yeah. Okay, 10. good, good. How late have you guys been sleeping in at home since you've been home? Uh, hey, about Whitaker, the same time, a weekend, uh, about the same time for a weekend at CMA. About, like, I saw Whitaker's face. <laughs> what time do you get up, Whitaker? I've been, I've been waking up early every morning. Oh, really? Okay, I thought you were going to be one of these yeah. 1 p.m. Yeah. guys or something. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Got another question. Are boys fitted for the uniforms and shoes once they arrive on campus that first week? Yes. Um, in the past, we allowed students to, um, I'm sorry, we allowed parents to come on with the, with the students and go through the fitting process and, and that whole thing on the very first day. Um, starting this year, or actually we started last year during COVID, going to continue it this year. Uh, we're just going to measure everyone um, that first week of school. So instead of trying to do everything on day one, um, because I don't know if you guys, how many are watching from outside of the state of South Carolina, but we are one hot place. And um, so in the summer, you know, and we start mid-August, um, you know, it becomes very warm. And so we wear shorts and t-shirts, the, the summer PTs for the first couple of weeks of school. So that'll give us a chance to get everyone measured and back into their uniforms. Um, so by the end of that third week, we should all have our uniforms back and, and dressing every day. Um, and another question, do you have to pay for extracurricular activities like ski trips, paintball, et cetera? Um, for some, so you have some field trips that are included, others are optional. So like the NBA trips, the NFL trips, um, the, uh, the paintball, those are optional trips and parents, you always have to approve for them to go. So, you know, that's, that's definitely your call for our optional trips. It's not, um, mandatory that you go, um, but cause we only take about 50 to 60 students per trip. And then question here, what are the major breaks and how long are there? Are they? Um, so you have some, some breaks that these guys have not got to experience yet, but we're going to have, um, we start the third week in August. We have a five day optional break in um, October for fall break. Um, and then we have the Christmas break, which starts the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. We have a winter break at the end of January, beginning of February. Um, then we have spring break around Easter. All those, the only ones that are mandatory would be Christmas and um, Christmas and Easter are the only two that are mandatory. The others are optional. You'll also have the opportunity to earn furloughs throughout the year, and that's based on grades, your leadership ability. And, um, you know, so if you want to visit a college, something like that, you could go for a furlough. A furlough is different than a break. A furlough lasts from Friday after school, and you have to be back on Sunday night by 9 p.m. So if you're watching from out west and you're in California, it's going to be hard to get back and forth in that little bit of time. But I would suggest that you make friends with Mark or Lucas, who live fairly close, and you can go home for them for the weekend, um, you know, or somebody like them here in the southeast, and you know, spend some time there. So, um, but yeah. All right. So um, that looks like all of our questions for now. We have a lot of questions tonight. I like an interactive session, but um, we're going to start wrapping it up. And guys, I want to ask you one last question. And um, what piece of advice? would you offer to someone who's thinking about it and they're maybe not sure about it? You know, the boy's a little scared or maybe the mom's, you know, I don't want to let my baby go. Um, you know, that kind of thing. What's your advice to either of those or both of them? Mark, you go first. Um, I'm going to take probably the best piece of advice I've gotten at Camden. Um, and that's from first Sergeant Collins, my TAC officer for the last two years. Um, he, he likes to say, take things one day at a time. And that is a hundred percent the best thing you can do at Camden. You're going to have, you know, you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days, but take things one day at a time. Don't let a bad day affect a good day. Always, always, always try your best. 
always do everything that you can. All right. And uh, Whitaker, how about you? What's a piece of advice you'd give a new guy coming in? Um, I don't know. I was, I was scared to come to Camden. So I'd probably just say, uh, just do it. Cause it's probably going to be one of the better things you do with, uh, with your, with your choices. You know, it's, it's going to be great for you. All right. And Cole piece of advice for you. Well, uh, coming to Camden, uh, make the best of it because if you don't make the best out of it, you're not going to get anything out of going to Camden. That's what I did for my like first month. And, and it was terrible, but once I gave it a shot and I really put effort into it, I started making a lot of new friends. Um, I started having a better attitude with it and you, you just, you just see it as a second home. There you go. I like that Cole. Cause I, you know, I always tell families that visit that we're, we're like a family friendly type military school, which really they don't mesh, but you know, I mean, we have a lot of green space here. We have faculty that really care. Um, you know, I always talk about my dog, Bell. I guarantee you all three of these guys know who Bell is. My little black and white English bulldog that's all over campus. Um, you know, so we, we, we do have fun here. Um, it's a lot of hard work. You'll have more good days than bad, but, um, but we do care about you and we want each young man that we have here to do, to do and be the very best that he can do, um, you know, and reach that potential that he has inside of him. So, um, all right. If we did not get to your questions tonight, um, please email them. You can email me. Any email that you send from the website comes directly to me. There'll also be a card coming up here at the end of this presentation as my direct email um, address on there. Um, guys, thank you for taking time out of the summer to, uh, to hang with us for a little bit and help some prospective families and students decide if this is the right option. And uh, you, guys, you guys did a great job. And um, until next time, we're going to sign off from Camden, South Carolina. We hope you have a good evening.